this is um, a job that is really like no other. I wanted to be in a union and I wanted the money. I definitely had a pit in my stomach my first six months down here just because the nature of the work was unlike anything I'd ever done in my life. I was terrified my first job. I didn't know how to get there. I didn't know anybody and I kind of gave up after the first couple um, jobs I had down here. I was just like, that's not for me. Like, it was intimidating. You know, and your parents say, you really don't understand until you get grown. When you're down here, you're grown, grown. <laughs> and it's a great feeling. I'm Bev Berge, and I started here, I believe it was in 1978 or 9, I can't remember which one it was now. I didn't get the job right away. <laughs> Dispatcher wouldn't pick me because I was a woman and didn't want a woman down there. So he called every church, every bar, every person he knew, got in the phone book, asked his friends, did they know anybody he could go to work for? Him? And he couldn't get anybody, so he finally let me sign the pad, and I went to work down on the logs. I never even heard what Longshore was. I I had no clue, but uh, a family friend was uh, a crane driver in Seattle, and he had said that uh, uh, Tacoma was going to need to be hiring, so I put an application in. Coming down here and getting the taste of the freedom and the income you can make, it just surpasses all the other jobs I've ever had. And I don't see me having another job outside of this one that I would love as much as this. When I started longshoring, I started out as a casual. Um, I went to B, I went to A, um, and moved up the ranks. Um, and there's a certain you know progression that you do that. And then um, as an A, and then I also became a clerk. And then I did that for many years. And then um, a foreman. When I first came in, there wasn't a lot of femininity. And I feel like I, I definitely brought that to longshoring. You know, I've been myself, I've always been a feminine woman, and I just held on to that. You know, I still get my nails done, I still dress, you know, I don't have to dress like one of the guys, I can still get the same respect. And then also, being that I am a woman of color, there's not that many even still to this day. And so I definitely feel like that I definitely have room to make an impact on some of the newer people coming in. It's a really hard job to understand unless you are fully submerged in it. And so much of it is just on the job training. They throw you in, you figure it out, you hope that you're working with someone that's willing to like mentor you and, and show you the ropes. I think I did lash in so much that it kind of became my comfort spot. I remember I had a lashing job. I had a double, I took a double, and it was a day side, so from eight to five. Then I had that same night from six to three in the morning. Worst job that I've had down here, because it was straight lash, like no breaks. You lashed the whole day side, went to the night side, and then lashed. And I went home with bruises on my thighs, and I was so sore, and I just remember going home, and the next day I was like, next couple of days I was like, I'm not even gonna go in, because I couldn't move, it was, I was, it was so painful. But I think I got used to that until I learned how to drive truck. Then I just lived in a semi for a long time. You got 500 pound bales of pulp and you've got to put them on a dolly in order to bend it over. The guys could just go like that. Well, I'd have to use my body to bend it to get the lift under it. And then I'd have to push it back to get it back to where you could roll it. So, I mean, a lot of times it chopped on my toes and my fingers and everything else. But it's part of life. I didn't break any bones, surprisingly. The three of us sitting here, is, we had something to prove. There's no question. There's, oh, yeah. The three of us had to prove that we, we had the right to be down here, and, and I, we proved that. <laughs> We're still here, and we proved that, that we had the right to be here. You work down with the men, you've got to have an attitude where you've got to be one of the guys or you're not going to make it. Right, yeah. So. Yeah, you had to have yeah. some, a form of an attitude of, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not going away. Yeah, well, that was my <laughs> attitude. So. Your attitude not going Yeah, away. I had five kids to support. I wasn't going anywhere. <laughs> I showed up in a generation where brute strength was not the defining feature of a longshoreman. Um, 
I'm a really good supervisor and I'm a, I'm a good equipment operator and all that stuff. And I can, I've always tried very hard to make sure when I show up at a job, it's one that people are like, oh cool, Megan's here. She can do that and she'll do it well. And I stay away from the handful of jobs that I don't know well or don't feel like I can physically pull my weight just so that that stereotype doesn't perpetuate that, oh, women don't belong here because they, they can't add value to the job. So I always go where I can add value. You're constantly proving people wrong all the time. Because, you know, when you're on that job, you know, there's men who still are very biased. Even the older generation, they are still very biased, you know? And that can definitely be hard in itself and, you know, bring you down if you let it. I know a few other women here who's had, you know, a tougher time than me, but I will say I did have a really tough time. You know, I'd have a breakdown on that job and I would just remember to leave it there. Tomorrow's a new day. That's it, not really thinking too much about it and just keep, just keep getting up and just keep going and just shrugging your shoulders. I knew what was going on with the guys. I knew they felt threatened on their, their idea of what a longshoreman was. It's not just their job, it's, it's what they are, who they are. And so when we came down here, that kind of, um, they felt castrated. And you know, even though how many times I try to explain to them, that's not what's going on or that's not what's gonna happen. You'll still be what you are. We're just gonna have a, a, a more diverse workforce. I came down here like hyper aware of the fact that I could not be a burden. I needed to make sure that whatever I did, I either showed up and did my best, even if it wasn't 100% carrying my weight, they couldn't say, oh, Megan just showed up and let us, you know, cover her or whatever. I come to work as a female, um, as a black female actually, and um, but I want to come to work as the best version of Lynn and I want people to say, young people to say, hey, I want to work like, like how she works. So yeah, I want to be proud of who I am every day when I wake up because that's who I have to answer to, I have to answer to me. I did not realize how strong I was to endure all of this, you definitely have to be strong. I don't regret this at all. This was the best thing that I could have ever done for myself, as, especially at such a young age. And it, it made it easier for me to, to make the choices I made. I decided to um, leave my marriage when my daughter was only six months old. And a lot of women don't have that ability, but I had the financial freedom I knew that I had health benefits. All these barriers that keep people in bad relationships were not my barriers because I was lucky enough to have this job. The freedom to be with my kid when I need to be, um, if I'm to get sick or injured, the ability to take the time off when needed, um, to raise my kid and send him to the school I want to send him, to be able to travel and just enjoy the world outside of work when we want to. I just really love the freedom of it. And the people, the diversity. So many different backgrounds and people make it a really nice place to work. One night last year, I was the topic op operator and both women, or both crane drivers were women. I think the supervisor and the foreman were women and so it was just, I was hyper aware of the fact that for probably the first time in at that point my 11 year career, all major positions in the gang were female. And I was like, oh, okay, this is pretty cool, you know? So there's still kind of landmark things like that happening, but uh, it all feels very possible to me. Every, every level of seniority I could reach is, is within my grasp by now. There's no more ceilings. <laughs> I'm proud of what I do. Um, I'm proud of not only the work that I do, I'm proud of who I am being down here. The impact that you have down here of um, uh, impacting the, a whole society is um, incredible. Mm -hmm.